Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is episode 2 of How to Survive EVE Online, as refilmed for the Creus release, August 2014. Uh, for reference, it's only been about 5 hours or so since I filmed episode 1, so I haven't trained any new skill levels other than Repair Systems 1 since the last episode. Uh, in this episode, we are going to get started on the exploration chain. Uh, before we get started, however, uh, there is something I want to point out. Uh, EVE Online was designed to be difficult. It was designed to be a cold, harsh, and dangerous place. Typically, uh, players causing grief and misery for other players any way they can uh, is permitted, generally speaking. That being said, CCP has established a specific exception for new players trying to run the tutorial missions. So if you find that another player is trying to destructively interfere with your ability to complete the tutorial missions, that is a punishable offense. You can report that to the Game Masters. In order to do that, you go to the EVE menu, Help, the Support tab, and you create a new support ticket. The group is Rules and Policies. The category is Rookie Griefing and you click the select button and you can type in a subject and the text of the support ticket. Once you're done with all the tutorials, including the level one Sisters of Eve epic arc, the Bloodstained Stars, that protection goes away and you'll need to be more careful. Uh, but for the time being, while you're just trying to get started, you do have some level of official protection. So let's get started with the exploration chain. Uh, if you decline or fail a mission from an agent, he or she might become displeased and lower your standings towards him or her. You can decline a mission every four hours without penalty. Uh, yeah, that's pretty standard. Don't show this message again. So first, your agent wants you to find a cosmic anomaly. So let's click accept. Close and undock. And let me get this out of the way. So from this button to the left of your capacitor donut, you're going to go to your probe scanner. That brings up the scanning window. Here's your probe scanner. You don't have any probes yet, but we'll take care of that problem later this episode. And you'll notice that you already have three green bars here. These are, com these are cosmic anomalies. Any ship that you fly will be able to find cosmic anomalies, even if it doesn't have probes on board. And your agent wants you to warp to one of these co uh, cosmic anomalies. So just click on any one of the warp two buttons and your ship will warp there. Make sure it says combat anomaly training site. If it doesn't have the word training in it, then that's a real exploration site. And you're likely going to die when you drop out uh, in pretty short order after dropping out of warp. So make sure it says Combat Anomaly Training Site. That's what you need. Now, Cosmic Anomaly... At exploration sites of any type, whether they're Cosmic Anomalies or Cosmic Signatures, are transient in nature. They don't stick around for very long. And once the site is completed, it goes poof. It will be replaced later, somewhere else, with another site of the same type. Uh... But yeah, they don't show up in the, in the same exact spots. You do have to go hunting for them. So we've dropped out of warp. We're about 12 kilometers away from the training container. 10, nine. So you're gonna approach the container and you're gonna open it up. And while we're twiddling our thumbs, I'm gonna click on this little box down here. Let's see. Uh, Display empty slots, display readout, do not display readout as a percentage. There we go. All right, so here we have proof of discovery anomalies, loot all. If for whatever reason the container is empty, a new proof of discovery will be spawned a few seconds later. 
uh, return to your station. You might have to double click in empty space to get around obstructions. And then dock. Remember, you can always maneuver manually by left, double left clicking a spot, an empty spot in the background. And your ship will fly in that direction. And we've dropped out of warp a kilometer short of the station, so we have to get a little bit closer. Twiddle our thumbs, now we've docked. Sometimes you drop out of warp immediately in docking range, sometimes you drop out of warp a little bit away. There's a way to fix that, I'll tell you in a moment. But first, we're going to talk to our agent. And we're going to complete the mission. And our agent gives us the survey skill book. And if we show info, uh, we meet the requirements of this. So we are going to go ahead and right click train now to level one. And yes, I want to switch skill training. Do not ask me again. That's a shortcut for a new skill that you've just injected. Although you could always go to your training queue and uh, drag it in manually if you want to. Um, survey 3, level 3, is a prerequisite for a couple of other skill books that the tutorials will give to you for free. So after a Margaret Frigate level 3, let's drag in Survey 2, Survey 3, and click Apply. And let's close that. Let's request the next mission. And on this mission, the agent wants us to go on a guided tour of the different types of cosmic signatures uh, and will give us a new frigate right off the bat. So we're going to click accept and our new ship appears in the ship hangar. If you didn't open your ship hangar earlier, like in the previous episode, you can find it from the Eve menu, inventory, open ship hangar. And in last episode I showed you how to drag an item from the EVE menu onto your Neocom. So let's close this. Let's open up fitting window. And we're going to strip the ship. Click yes. And close the fitting window. I'm going to right click the tormentor, assemble ship. And this is tutorial guide Dunhu's tormentor. If we're looking at the ship hanger, you can just simply drag the ship into the background. And the game will throw uh, information, a text at you about uh, insurance. I'll actually cover the insurance window uh, in more detail during the episode on advanced military. That will be episode six. I'm not going to touch that for now. Uh, so here's our tormentor, and we're going to open the fitting window. Let's drag in our Gatling Pulse Laser. I'm going to drag it into the second slot for reasons that will become clear later. Drag in the small armor repairer. Uh, and you know what? I left stuff hanging around in the Imperius cargo hold. So let me drag that out to the main hangar floor. There we go. By the way, if you're ever confused as to what container a particular inventory window is looking at, you can look in the subtitle bar. I'm, I'll, I'm going to call it a subtitle bar. I'm going to make up names here. So this says ship hangar. Whereas if I right click a ship that I'm not flying and I open cargo hold, ship hangar, tutorial guide done who's impairer. If it just says a ship, that's the main cargo hold. However, if I do something like open drone bay, oh, uh, you know what? It doesn't have a tree structure for that. Never mind. But in the left sidebar, it will have a breakdown view for this. So here's the drone bay, here's the main cargo hold, here's the ship hangar. I'm going to close the sidebar for now. But that is a way to figure out, uh, help figure out which inventory it is you're looking at. So we have everything we need for our ship. Let's undock.
Control spacebar immediately. Now, remember when I told you about the problem where sometimes you drop out of warp two kilometers short of a station? Here's one of those good practices I'm going to teach you that's not covered in the tutorial proper. Let's go to People and Places. And we're going to add location. And I'm going to call this a cuddle bookmark. All right, so we're cuddle uh, so this is a location that kind of sort of cuddles the station. It's kind of close. I'll explain the usefulness of that later. The other good practice I'm going to teach you is changing the name of your ship. So right click on your own ship or right click your capacitor and you're going to set name Impairer. Press return. The reason for this, as long as we've got our scanner window open, let's go to the directional scanner tab, which is not related to what we're doing right now. If we run the directional scanner, why is the name column this wide? There we go. So if we run the directional scanner, uh, we see a whole lot of things that are uh, detected on the directional scanner. Let me click on Use Active Overview Settings because I don't want to see most of this junk. So here, with a more filtered list, we have a whole bunch of things that are within the directional scanner's range, within 14.3 astronomical units of our ship. Some of these are player ships, and you can see the names of those ships. There's an Imperer called Grigory Janow's Imperer, Ilya Kyulev Punisher, which is not the standard name, Julian Trailer's Bestower, Mackenzie Tenford's Tormentor. Uh, what else do we have out here? Titan Rails Imperer, Sun Tzu Khan's Venture, Tai Guy 7's Ish. Okay, that's also not a standard format. And this is not even an Ishtar, it's a small standard container. But anyway, you can detect other players' ships on the directional scanner. The thing is, the directional scanner returns the name of the ship, not the name of the pilot inside it. Chances are, if it contains the name of, if the sh name of the ship contains the name of the pilot, then chances are that pilot is inside that ship. So chances are this Grigori Janow's Imperer that I see on the directional scanner is being flown by Grigori Janow. That's not guaranteed, but it's extremely likely. It is possible that Grigori Janow uh, handed off his Imperer to um, somebody else, and that somebody else is flying the Imperer for him. Could happen. But generally speaking, if other players are trying to hunt you, you don't want to make it easy for them, so you want to change the name of your ship. So now that I've changed the name of my ship to just Imperer, then on other people's directional scanner, my ship will show up on their D-scan only as an Imperer called Imperer. They don't know who it belongs to or who's flying it. But anyway, I've digressed enough. Uh, we, we don't need the scanner window for this next mission, so we're going to right-click uh, Agent Missions and Introduction to Cosmic Signatures, and we're going to Encounter Dead Space Warp 2 Location. Warp And the game will throw text at you. Uh, you will want to take the time to read this on your own. Uh, I am not going to waste your time. Warp drive active. Just follow the acceleration gates and read the text uh, as you go along. I'll just give you brief versions. So, finding cosmic anomalies, you've already done. We just did that earlier. Uh, any ship can do that. But if you're going to find cosmic signatures, you're going to need specialized equipment for that. You're going to need either core probes or combat probes. Core probes are better at it than combat probes. So combat probes, uh, I'm sorry, core probes and a core probe launcher, at the very least. Skill training completed. Ah, survey level one is complete. Uh, loot, uh, so... Right now we're looking at the exploration supplies 
container. If we loot all, this gets transferred to our ship's cargo hold. Now we're looking at the Impera's cargo hold. We have all the stuff we need. Uh, this cargo rig is in our way. Let's double click straight up. Now we activate the acceleration gate. Warp drive active. Using an acceleration gate is kind of like going into warp. If you're bumping into things, you won't actually be able to go through the acceleration gate. So you've got a control space bar to stop and then go through. Um, so the game's going to throw text at you at about data sites. You can read that on your own, but basically data sites require the hacking skill and use data analyzer modules and you can find stuff that's useful in various advanced manufacturing processes. Uh, there's also relic sites, uh, same deal, but you need the archaeology skill and relic analyzers. Warp drive active. Finally, we have gas cloud sites. And to make use of gas cloud sites, uh, you need uh, gas harvesting modules. The gas clouds in known space that you can get to with stargates are used to make uh, boosters, performance enhancing drugs for capsuleers. The gas cloud sites in wormhole space are used uh, for some of the materials to make Tech 3 strategic cruisers, which are a very advanced type of ship. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. And I completely forgot to warp to my cuddle bookmark, which I promised to do. I'll try to remember that uh, the next time I warp back to the station. But anyway, I'm going to talk to the agent, complete the mission. Uh, you will sometimes want to read the extra text in these agent dialogues. I'm not going to waste your time. Request the next mission, and we need to get a proof of discovery for a data site. So let's accept the mission and close. And let's open up the fitting window, and let's double click on our ship in the ship hangar. If you're looking at your captain's quarters view, then double left clicking in captain's quarters view isn't going to help. You would have to go to right click your ship, open your cargo hold, or you would have to go to Eve menu, inventory, cargo hold. Either would work. Drag in the core probe launcher, the core scanner probes, and let's tack on the civilian data and civilian relic analyzers. Close the fitting window. If the sh keyboard shortcuts don't work right away, left click once in the background, try it again. Uh, let's undock. All right, control space bar. Let's close our cargo hold. And let's open up the probe scanner window again. Let's open up the map, F10, and in the world map control panel, click solar system map, since that's what we need right now. And you can click this button for launch pinpoint formation, and that will launch a set of probes for you. And let me get rid of this. You can read this on your own if you want to, but I'm about to explain everything here. So you now have a set of probes out in space, and these probes can find uh, cosmic signatures. All these red spheres indicate the approximate locations of various cosmic signatures. Uh, the green arrowheads like that one, for example, hold on, this thing, that's a site that you've already found. Typically, that's a combat anomaly site. All right. So what you're trying to do with these probes is find these various cosmic signatures. Uh, let's start off by making the scan radius really wide, and we're going to scan. Okay. 
you can see the progress bar trailing across from left to right. And when the scan completes, you will have a series of points to try to investigate. None of these are up to 100%. We cannot warp to them yet. We don't know exactly where they are. If I click on this uh, best result for a relic site, the probes think the relic site are, is located approximately here, but they're not quite certain about it. They're lying to me a little bit about where that thing is located. The lower the percentage signal strength, the more your probes are lying to you about the location of that object. So what you want to do is move your probes, and the way you move your probes is you left click and drag either the arrowheads to lock movement to a single axis, or you can left click and drag a face of the cube to lock movement to a particular plane. So I'm going to look at this along a major axis, and I'm going to left click and drag the surface of the cube and drag it onto this yellow marker. I'm going to turn my view 90 degrees, and I'm going to left click and drag an arrowhead to center it on the marker again. So now my probe formation is centered on the approximate location of this relic site. And I'm going to left click and drag an edge of the bubble and drag it in towards the center of the formation so that it snaps to the next size down. And I'm going to scan again. So now this relic site that we're looking for, notice how the signal has moved. The relic site hasn't actually gone anywhere. The probes were just wrong about where it was located. It's somewhere over here, not somewhere over here. So we're going to move the probes again and move them in here, center it on there. Where's, here's the center of formation. All right, so we're recentering the formation on where we think this uh, relic site is and we're going to reduce the scan radius again by one step. You don't want to reduce this too quickly. Remember that the probes are wrong to some extent about where this thing is located. If you try to drop, right now this, the sensible range would be eight astros. If you try to drop this all the way down to uh, half an astro or a quarter of an astro and scan, this is ID Victor Echo Lima, TAC 545. All these scan signatures have an identifier, uh, six characters and a hyphen. Uh, so Victor Echo Lima 545, the probes can't find it. It's a red dot. They cannot see it anymore. So our guess of where it was was wrong. And we zoomed in way too much. And as a result, we lost the signal. That can sometimes be because the target no longer exists, but it's usually because you zoomed in too much and you were wrong. So we're going to expand back out to eight astronomical units, and we're going to scan again. So you only want to go down maybe a step or two at a time. So if you were scanning at 16 astros radius, only go down to eight or four. Don't jump all the way down to two, not unless your skills are really good. And here's Victor Echo Lima 545. And we've also happened to found a data training site that's also not far away from it. So these signals are now at 100% and we can warp to them. You won't see a 100%, you'll instead see this triple headed arrow for warping to it. We're gonna right click the relic training site, save location and submit. Right click the data training site, save location, and submit. And uh, let's also, f we're going to need to find a gas site eventually. All right, so here's the strongest signal gas site that we have available. We have a red bubble rather than a dot of any sort. The red bubble indicates that only one probe can see it. If the target were somewhere around here, 
we wouldn't be getting a bubble. Other probes would be seeing this thing. So it's more likely the target is over here and not over here. So we're going to drag our formation out to cover that part of the bubble. And we're going to scan again. All right, so we have our gas training site up to 86.1%. Oh, by the way, you can double left click on you can double left click on a scan entry to center your camera uh, orbit around that point. So we can drag in our probes on top of it, turn our view, drag the center of the probes again. There we go. Now, 86.1% is pretty good, so I feel confident dropping my range down uh, two settings. I could probably even have gone three settings. As you get more practiced at this, and you get more skill points in the scanning-related skills, uh, you'll be able to do this faster and faster. So now we have the gas training site scanned all the way to 100%. We're going to right-click that, save location, and submit. Um, we're done with the probes, so let's recover our active probes and hit F10 to close the map. Now, when we were saving locations, we were saving records of their coordinates. You can access them by right-clicking in space, and we need the data training site first. So let's warp to location to within zero meters. and it's the data training site that our current mission wants us to find. These are exploration sites, so the mission won't send us directly to the site. We have to scan it down first. So there's the training container for data, and we're going to get closer to it, and we're going to target lock it. So control left click. And we're within 2,500 meters, so we're going to full stop. You only need to be within 5 kilometers to use your data analyzer, but once you break it open, you need to be within 2.5 kilometers to loot anything. So let's go ahead and click the data analyzer. And now we come to the hacking minigame. So we've broken into the net, partially into the network, and we've got a set of nodes, and we need to find the system core. So we're going to click through one node at a time and see if we can find this thing. Up, oh, that's a firewall. We're not immediately interested in that. Let's try looking elsewhere. That's another firewall. All right, I'm going to guess that the system core is somewhere around here, so let me attack this firewall first. Now, you're uh, breaking into this network with a virus. Your virus has a coherence of 25, and it has an attack strength of 10. So when I click this firewall... I'm going to smack off 10 unit points of its coherence, and it will return fire and smack off 10 points of my coherence. That's one click. I'm going to attack it again by clicking it again, but since that's going to kill it, it won't counterattack. So it won't knock off another 10 points. It's dead. Uh... Okay, I was wrong about where the system core was located. Let me attack this firewall. All right, I managed to kill the firewall. There's the system core. Uh, I'm going to smack that system core, take 10 points off of it, and it's going to counterattack, and my virus is dead. So the hack failed. Let's try this again. Oh, Give me a break. Right. That's not gonna... That's not gonna work. Let's 
try this again. As your skills, as you put more skill points into hacking, uh, you can use the real data analyzer module to do this, and your virus won't die so quickly. All right, here's the system core. I'm gonna click once. That knocks 10 points off of it. It counterattacks for 10. I'm gonna attack it again, and it dies, and this time the hack succeeded. Now I can loot it, and I have my proof of discovery data site. And you know what? Let me reload my core probe launcher. Right-click in space, relic training site, and let's warp to that. Warp drive it's not needed for our current mission, but I figure we can kill two birds with one stone. We don't need to dock and undock a second time. All right, approach the relic site. Twill our thumbs while we wait. Might as well target lock it. But yeah, uh, if you right-click your module and show info, uh, virus strength, uh, I'm sorry, virus coherence of 25, virus strength of 10. Uh, there are ships that grant bonuses to these numbers, and s higher skill levels in hacking and archaeology will also increase these numbers. So you'll have a stronger virus and a, a more coherent virus, so you'll be more likely to break through more difficult systems. Control space bar to full stop, because the hack will fail if we get too far away from the container. And we're going to run our relic analyzer this time, civilian relic analyzer. And there's the system core. Remember that a given node will only counterattack and take coherence off your virus if it survived your first attack. Uh, so let's go ahead and loot it. We now have our proof to discovery relic. Uh, let's leave the gas site alone for reasons that will become clear later. No, hold on. Warp drive control spacebar, control spacebar. I want to use my cuddle bookmark this time. Right click, personal locations, cuddle, warp to within zero meters. I'm going to show you why a cuddle bookmark is useful. Saved locations, formerly known as bookmarks, not to be confused with your in-game browser bookmarks, which are also a thing, because it's in your accessories, you have an in-game browser. So this warps us to our saved location called Cuddle, and this will always be within docking range, and we can dock docking instantaneously without having to docking ever cover those last two kilometers, because we just randomly dropped out of warp two kilometers away from the station. By my own personal testing, I, you have to be within 250 meters to dock. Let's talk to the agent. Let's complete the mission. And she gives us a hacking skill book. Uh, we need electronics upgrades level 3, which we don't have, and the tutorials are not going to give this to you. Uh, right click uh, view market details, uh, and it is available for sale in Dipari, uh, in any of the training school stations for 100,000 ISK. Oh, I almost forgot. We have a market. So right click the skill, view market details. Things are bought and sold on the market. Skill books are usually on, uh, sold by NPCs, but there are a lot of other things on the market that are bought and sold by players. Uh, you can look at the prices on the market, and you can sort by price. You can sort by how far away the item is from you. And if you want to make use of an item, you have to actually go there and get the item. 
So if I buy something in Fora, Fora 5, Moon 3, Imperial Academy, I'm going to have to travel 7 jumps to get all the way over there. Or I can buy the one that's right here in Station. So I can right-click and buy this. Uh, market orders do have an expiration timer. If that timer is longer than 90 days, then the buy or sell order was set up by an NPC. If it's 90 days or shorter, it was set up by a player. So these are all being sold by players. These are being sold by NPCs. There are many things that are, being, that are bought and sold by players, and we'll see a demonstration of this in the next episode. But here we have electronics upgrades. I'm going to inject this skill, go to the training queue, and because we need this for the hacking skill, uh, drag one, two, three, and click apply. And let's close this. All right, uh, we're going to request the next mission, and the agent now wants us to get proof of discovery relic site. We already have it. We went out and we got went to that site already, so we don't have to undock an, a, an extra time for that. So we accept. Uh, get rid of the tutorial text. Complete the mission, because we already did that. And now we have archaeology. Archaeology needs science 3 and survey 3. Uh, we currently have survey 3 queued up. We can't inject this right now. We will be able to inject it later request the next mission, and this is the final step of the exploration chain. Uh, the agent wants us to find a gas site, and the site is going to be locked by an acceleration gate, and we need a proof of discovery gas pass key to get in. This is why we had to come back early. So we accept the mission. We now have proof of discovery gas pass key. Drag that into your ship's cargo hold. You need this. Let's let's close, close this, undock. Now this is a tutorial system. There are many other new players running tutorials at the same time. It's quite possible that in all the time I was flapping eye jaw, right click, gas training site, warps location, it's quite possible that site is no longer there and the lack of a pop-up tooltip announcing the gas site is a little worrying. Oh no, wait, I'm thankfully wrong. There's an acceleration gate here. So let's activate the gate. Warp drive active. If this gas site were not here, I would have to put out my probes again and go looking for another gas site. Such is life. By the way, that acceleration gate uh, only let us in because we had this proof of discovery bat cat gas pass key in the cargo hold. If we forgot to bring this with us, the acceleration gate would throw an error message at us. Let's go ahead and open the, con the training container. And loot all. And close this. Control spacebar. Alright. So we are done with the exploration. Um, one other thing I want to talk about with probes. Uh, let's launch the pinpoint formation again for a moment. You can double click on a probe to center your camera rotation on that probe. It's only showing you one control box because you're moving the formation as a whole rather than individual probes around. However, you can hold down shift and now you have control boxes for each individual probe. Your mouse wheel won't work to zoom in and out while you're doing this, so you may need to zoom appropriately and then hold down shift. So you can see that your default pinpoint formation is a pentagonal bipyramid. Uh, one up, one down, five in a pentagon, and one in the center. Personally, I like the cube formation better because having studied the numbers on probe scanning, I have reason to believe that a cube formation would be better than a pentagonal by pyramid. So I'm going to rearrange my probes such that they form a cube shape. Let's see. Move 
this here. Now move this up here, so to on top of the sec on the second probe, and then drag one of them straight out again. I'm keeping my shift key held down the entire time while I'm do while doing all this left clicking and dragging. And let's bring this last probe here. So that these two are coincident and drag one of them up. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to a cube. Uh, now I'm let, let go of the shift key, hold down Alt, and I am going to left click and drag one of the probes, and holding down Alt and dragging will expand or collapse the formation without changing the scan radius. So that looks like a comfortable distance to set them. They still have a very good overlap in the middle of the cube. Uh, and I'm going to let go of Alt, and I'm going to go over here where this four lines button is. going to click on that, click here, cube, save. Now whenever I want a cube formation, I can launch the cube formation. Let's recall the probes. Close this, right click, and let's warp to our cuddle bookmark. Warp drive active. Control R to reload the probes into my probe launcher. Uh, by the way, if you're using missiles, hybrid weapons, or projectile weapons, basically things that don't use frequency crystals, you can also control R to reload those types of weapons. Regular old frequency crystals never break. You will you can use them forever. They will last as long as your ship lasts. And if your ship blows up, there's a chance that they will survive in the wreckage. So they might even last longer than your ship. I'm going to talk to the agent. And we are going to complete the mission. Alright, and we are going to close. Now, before we actually end the episode, I'm going to have you talk to the business agent and just do the first mission of the business chain. The reason being, the rewards for this mission, he's going to give you a mining frigate skill book immediately and an industry skill book uh, once you complete the mission. It's a courier mission from Dipari to Arabaz. Uh, so we're going to right-click Arabaz, set destination, right-click Dipari, add waypoint. And we're going to accept the mission, and he wants us to move data sheets. So we don't need the proof of discovery pass key anymore. Let's move the data sheets into the cargo hold. Uh, we're going to right click mining frigate, train now to level one. Close and undock. You're going to be awarded an actual mining frigate ship called a venture. Uh, so you want to have the skills for that. So at least do this first step of the business chain before you go taking a break. Uh, and the skill training, which is going to take about half an hour for those two skills combined, that skill training will be complete by the time you get back. Uh, other things that I want you to do, we're going to go to the market, and we're going to search for target management. This is a skill that I think you need, which the tutorials will not give you. So you're going to buy a copy of this in Dipari, or wherever your tutorial hub is. Um, any stations that are in the same solar system as a, uh, as a point along your route will be in yellow. Let's see. Uh, click the yellow station and dock. Warp drive active. Let's see. And as long as we are at this, I will also have you get energy grid upgrades. Skills, energy grid upgrades. Remember, this needs to look like a book icon. If this looks like something else, 
that's not a skill book. You just want energy grid upgrades. Right click. Uh, hold on, let me wait to finish docking. Right click Tipari 2 Imperial Academy. Buy this. Buy one copy of that. We'll inject those uh, momentarily, but let's go to the agent that says accepted. We're going to complete the mission. Oh, oh sorry. Here's the courier cargo. We're going to complete the mission. The courier cargo disappears from our cargo hold, and we're going to close, and we're going to undock, and we will return to Tipari. Warp drive active. And we don't need the scanner window anymore. By the way, you may have noticed that the scanner window contained a tab called Moon Analysis. Uh, that's a more advanced subject, uh, which I will not be covering in this series. Suffice it to say that it pertains to Moon Minerals and Moon Goo, which are materials for advanced tech 2 production and i forgot to warp to my cuddle bookmark but thankfully i dropped out of warp within docking range why am i not keeping my own habits Ugh. all right right click industry train now to level one energy grid upgrades inject skill target management inject skill uh, so let's go to our skill training queue uh, we're going to slot in, hold on, let's collapse a lot of these headers. Under targeting, drag in target management after mining frigate. Uh, let's drag it in a couple of times. So we got two levels of that. Uh, you know what, we can fit three levels of that. Uh, and, and for energy grid upgrades, that's going to be under engineering. So energy grid upgrades, one and two. And click apply. All right. And going to close the skill training queue. And that is it for now. In the next episode, we will get started on the early parts of both the business and industry tutorial chains, because there are reasons that it will make sense to run those two chains at the same time. In the meantime, thank you for watching.